Hey, welcome to the Cost of Goods Told podcast. My name is Connor. I'm a chef and media producer. I will be joined via f- uh, phone connection uh, with my co-producer, Darren Lafferty. Um, with uh, with everything that's going on, we wanted to try and put together a podcast that's got some information out there for uh, small business owners and those who are in the food service industry. So we called as many people as we could um, as quickly as possible, and we're trying to produce these uh, podcast episodes as quickly as possible as well so that we can just get some information out there. Hopefully this helps those who are in the industry. Um, just as a personal note, everybody stay safe. If you need anything, don't hesitate to call uh, text or message uh, cost of goods told. Um, I'm going to try and provide as much resources and as much info as possible uh, on the show notes. Um, but please just make sure that you're following the Facebook page and the Instagram page. That's usually where I, I, I try and get as much information out as possible. So I'm going to shut up and then we're just going to jump right into the conversations. What's up, Mr. Moran? Lance, how you doing, sir? Oh, you know, just living the dream. <laughs> I'm actually the really fucked up dream. <laughs> oh, I know, right? I, I wish I could wake up from this. I'm actually recording this right now, just so you know. Um, <laughs> I'm actually cool. testing it out. So you are my first test run, uh, besides my wife who I called. So, and I can't share that one because we said lovey dovey things to each other. So. Uh, but maybe I want to hear those. The people want to hear. <laughs> and during this time, yeah, I think a, a lot of lovely, lovey doveys would uh, would help, huh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, so um, I, I was hoping you had a few minutes. I know you put some stuff online and everything, uh, but I was hoping we could do an audio version and, and maybe have a quick conversation about the stuff that um, you know we had talked about on Facebook. If you've got absolutely. a moment. Absolutely. Awesome. Very cool. So, um, Lance, if you don't mind just introducing yourself um, and talking about your business. I'm Lance Aker with Aker Barbecue Food Truck and now grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> General store. There you go. All right. And so if you could just explain a little bit of how y'all have uh, maybe changed uh, operations or adhered to the new COVID-19 type of, um, like, CDC uh, regulations? So, uh, being a food truck, we're, uh, we're, we're both hit very hard negatively and then, to some extent, uh, uh, geared to do something like this. So, this is our busy time of year, so there's a lot of festivals, bars are really picking up. This is, this is actually prime revenue time for us this time of year. That being said, being a food truck, we're built for to go order. We're built for carry out. That's what we do. It, uh, the only thing that changes would be the container that we put it in. Uh, as opposed to a bar serving in uh, boats, now we wrap, now we put in containers and bags. And that's, that's essentially what we need to do to adapt, other than locations and where to go. Um, now obviously, when this first happened, shortly after the rodeo was canceled, um, the day after, we lost about three or four re- weeks of our of, of our gigs, just clean slate. And then um, after the following week, everything basically our entire schedule went wiped out. Mm-hmm. So to adapt, what we did is we we started in our neighborhood. Um, when we first started out, we didn't know where to go, so we did a lot of uh, we did a had a rented a spot, a parking lot spot over in the Maryland area. And so that's what we did to kind of get started. We had, you know, kind of work off of our friends and uh, students that uh, are parents that have kids that go to school with us, um, you know, friends that uh, the kids play soccer with. You know, we're part of the community. Mm-hmm. And uh, be- being so, that was something that we can kind of lean on when we first got started. So that's how we chose to adapt. We came back to the neighborhood. A church, uh, we've been coming periodically to a, a church over not far from our home and doing, um, I do a quote, I guess it's not really a pop-up, but, you know, showing up and serving, mm-hmm. uh, on a scheduled basis. We've done, you know, uh, PTO fundraisers, uh, and the like, uh, through, through there and just as well as just random pop-ups. Well, the church offered for us after this came down, it's like, if you need to come here, you don't even need to call me, just come. Aww. That you're providing a service that's good for the neighborhood. We appreciate you being here because now we have, uh, now we have the community coming to us 
whether they may not be coming directly to us, they are aware of us and they're aware that we're doing it. So we like that you're creating some sort of uh, community. So um, it's not the revenue we needed in March, but it's, it's, it's revenue. And, um, and the, the neighborhood's been very supportive and uh, I just, you know, I just, we couldn't be blessed. I, I, we're hoping it's enough to keep us rolling. Um, at the moment, it's, it's moderately paying the bills. And right now that's, that's better than most, I think. I understand. Our so customers, the, new no, the new normal. Our customers lining up, you know, obviously doing the social distancing, like the six feet or something like that, or are they calling in orders ahead of time? Are you taking orders online? How are you processing orders at the, at the current moment? So uh, mo- most of us walk up with some call. Um, and uh, we've, we've seen that everyone has been very keen on the social distancing. We've been seeing everybody uh, gather and be very cognizant of the six-foot rule. We have some signage up, uh, but it's un- for our neighborhood, it's been unnecessary. They've, they've been very, very gracious about it. Because, uh, one, obviously from a health perspective, that's what we need them to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but for us to keep operating, if we had health departments show up and see that we're not uh, that the people are not adhering to those guidelines. This is, these are why a lot of these other businesses are getting shut down because of their inability to adhere to those six feet standards. So um, we've been very fortunate in that we've had uh, customers customers do that. So most most have been call in, um, and um, I mean, sorry, most have been uh, you know walk up to window. Some have been call in. We do have an online store, uh, but uh, the way the way our POS system works, it's too difficult for us to, it's impossible really, to be able to track protein mm-hmm. uh, through things that are come through like plates and that sort of thing because they don't, I can't, I can't uh, specify them to, to a certain, certain item. So, um, so we've reduced that to our online store is providing uh, meat per pound. So we've, we've got some vacuum filled meat that you can take home, uh, warm up later, uh, whether it be in like a sous vide method or throw them in the freezer for future. So we've done those with all, most of our proteins with the exception of the ribs. Um, and then we, uh, we also offer some, some grocery items that our, our uh, distributor said, Hey, we have this stuff. Uh, yeah, you're not going to be HEB. You're not going to be able to sell it at HEB prices, but you're probably going to be better than, Amazon at this point with their with their accelerated uh, um, shipping rates and uh, then definitely better than a convenience store. So you offer it as a convenience if people want it, they can get it. So we're that on that store. We're offering um, bleach and toilet paper and paper towels and spaghetti. Okay, nice. <laughs> so just things that we found that weren't available in the store. We're not seeing a lot of traction with that, and we didn't expect to. Uh, this wasn't a, a thing to throw up there for money. It was more of a, we have this, if it's convenient for you, if you want to come and get a sandwich and, uh, and get some necessary, something to keep you from having to go to the store as well, mm-hmm. then we have you. Okay. So that's kind of answered uh, my, my second question as to like what changes in your business model have you made? What is maybe the, on the operational front, the biggest change that, that, that you've had to adapt to? So we, we, it's a location. We've gone from being variable and going to locations that we're going to maybe apartments or bars or the like, uh, corporate businesses where we're, we're seeing a different type of purchase where they're more of individual purchase as opposed to family. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing larger orders, but focused on poundage and larger, larger size, probably something more than a, like a restaurant would see. Um, so we're adjusting to that. The revenues are different. So you're having to calculate the, the proteins that you're bringing better because the revenues, uh, doesn't match up to the amount of protein that you do. The profitability is not as high. Um, but it's, it's, you know, whatever you can do to get, get, uh, you know, get some revenue in. Um, so that's been one change. Uh, it's, it's kind of nice. We're steady. I'm close to my house. In fact, I'm standing in my front yard and I'm looking at my truck about a block away. <laughs> so <laughs> there is that advantage. So I, I can run home and uh, <laughs> run, run home and grab some AC for a little bit if it gets too hot. <laughs> um, 
but uh, and it, it, there's in a lot of ways it's it's very beneficial. The people that are coming to see us are people that we've known for years. Some since we started the truck and along the way, some predating long before that. So it, it kind of it kind of gives us that that feeling more of a restaurant where we have a more steady regular than what we used to have. Um, but that being said, eventually, you know, a lot a lot of us are coming to support us. You know, I, I, they want our food. But at the same time, they're making, you know, the, the, the decision to come to us versus someone else, uh, like, a, you know, a chain, a chain restaurant or a fast food restaurant. And they know us and they know that we're in the community and we give back to the community. Mm-hmm. So um, so I, I know that that's playing in their decision making. So in doing so, we need to obviously be very gracious for that. And um, and I think starting next week, we're going to start mixing it up so we can give them something different. Um, different than just the barbecue that they're used to you can only eat so much barbecue before you kind of get <laughs> sick of it so um we've done we you know so we may do uh, uh we're going to offer beef ribs which we haven't done in a while for one day uh we may do a taco tuesday we're still kind of mixing it up but we're, we're thinking about adding some different items to the menu to kind of keep it mixed up and uh, and exciting and um uh, and maybe take a cue from some of the other other restaurants, uh, specifically barbecue, are doing a lot of family packs. Uh, make it easier. If you don't normally go to a barbecue, it can be kind of confusing. You look up at the screen, it's like, I, I see all these poundages and all these pints and forts. I don't know what that equates to meals. So we may put some meal package together, may throw in a roll of toilet paper to <laughs> just as a gimmicky <laughs> item <laughs> to get a family meal, get a free roll. I got it. Um, are you able to translate any of these over into, let's just say, you know, if, if you're looking down the line and, and even, you know, for, for the next couple of weeks or however long this is going to last, but then when things start to change and for the better, are you looking at any of these things that you're doing right now and saying, hey, look, we may actually keep this like, you know, or maybe we need to implement this moving forward. Um, is there anything that's kind of come up that you're like, man, you know what? We weren't doing this before, but maybe we need to continue doing this even when times are good. Uh, online ordering. Uh, once, uh, once we get through this, we'll, uh, we'll likely expand that out to more of a full menu. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just have to figure out how to, uh, how to figure out the, uh, you know, the, uh, the protein levels and the side levels, uh, through, through that as our, you know, POS won't track it as well as we like. But I think we're going to look at doing that going forward. It forced us into doing something we were planning to do. Mm-hmm. So now we got our now we put our toes in the water a bit. Now uh, now maybe we'll jump on in and and, and go forward with it. <laughs> you got you um, kind of got pushed in, you know, more so than anything. <laughs> exactly right. And uh, you know, this, we've been doing this for two years now. Before opening the truck, we did farmers market. So one of the things that we've learned is we've learned to be versatile. Um, and learn how to, uh, you know, learn how to pivot as quick as we can. Uh, we were fortunate to have this neighborhood spot and uh, a neighborhood that, that would come and support us. And, um, and, um, and that kind of, I don't know if the neighborhood could support a barbecue restaurant going forward, but right now I'm kind of thinking maybe they could. <laughs> so we had kind of, we kind of written it off because we were looking for more of a traditional model for, for lunch, which is highly residential. It may not work, but, with the kind of loyalty they've chose us, I, you know, I, I feel like I, I want to stay here. So, um, you know, we've been in the process of a uh, slow process of, of looking for a permanent location. Um, this, this could definitely influence us into looking more into this area, seriously. That's awesome. So any advice, any tools that you're using, any resources that you could offer up to somebody else who may still be trying to get their feet together? Um. As much social media as possible. I'm not the best example of that. Um, I do a newsletter. I've got, we've been doing a newsletter for two years now because a lot of our, uh, when we first started out, a lot of our uh, customers were in their 60s, 60s, 70s, didn't do Facebook, and they needed a way to get our schedule. So we implemented, uh, you know, through Square, we, uh, we started selling, um, uh, we started uh sending out a marketing email once a week with our schedule and any kind of updates or anything that we've, uh, that we've got going on. Um, right now uh, it's even more important than ever because people are more, uh, they're captured at home. So they're more likely to be looking at those type of things and, and then social media on top of that. 
Are you using um, like MailChimp or one of those um, email sources or, or, or resources, or are you just doing it yourself? We, we use, we use square for a point of sale. And, okay. um, whenever someone has, uh, uses a card and that is tied to an email address, uh, that automatically populates in our database. Okay. I didn't know that that um, so did that. that. So that's great advice. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, immediately when we first started within just a small period of time, we had, you know, an email list of, you know, almost a thousand where now our list is over. So they can opt out. Um, and then there's also an opt-in option if they don't have it on there, if they wanted to reach out to us and add it, you know, if they see our post on, on uh, Facebook that is, uh, that is pushed through that marketing email, uh, they can click on it and add themselves if they see it. So that marketing email works great. There's always that MailChimp and other options if you're not doing square. Um, but then it, the challenge becomes, you know, uh, making a focused effort and getting those email address. Because if you can get them to opt in, then you've got a captive audience that will see what you have whenever you send it. As opposed to Facebook, you make a post, they may not see it. It may not show up in, the, in that algorithm. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this, this, this definitely has helped us. Uh, it, I'm surprised at uh, how many people actually read our email. <laughs> uh, our, uh, you'll get to the point where you start tracking the, the reader rates and whatnot. And I think we're at like, our average is eighteen percent, and I think the national ten percent. Yeah, absolutely. I know, I know it's much smaller. <laughs> so uh, we've been fortunate in that regard, um, but I mean, it all comes down to you know community, and, and, and you got to do the same thing. You know, we've I haven't done it enough, but we've been eating in neighborhood spots. We've been eating in mom and pops. People are in the same predicament that we are. If we're not going to get at home. We're going to go out and support them because people have done it for us. We need to be doing the same. So if you can shrink local and as much as you can, focus on your area, uh, centralize your business, and um, and then and then try to give back. I mean, we're 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 talking about some ideas, uh, we're doing some fundraisers and stuff like that that uh, that we can give give some money to some other hospital hospitality uh, support groups that uh, or maybe medical. I know that there's a few like Regals that have already been on the forefront of some of that and. Uh, Lerma, Robert Jacob Lerma, with his, uh, he's doing a, a deal to help out some of the, the barbecue joints and Southern, uh, Southern Smoke Foundation as well. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that you can do to kind of, um, if you have a voice, use that voice to see if you can be able to help out others as well. Because the whole point of us, you know, you're, you're benefiting on the community, you need to be part of the community. So uh, anything that you can give back, uh, make it a two-way street. That's huge, Lance. I really appreciate that because I, I saw that Facebook post come up on my notification uh, about you trying to do something or trying to put something together. If, if people want to follow what you got going on and to get updates on that, what's the best way for them to, to kind of follow all of that from you? The best avenue is probably going to be Facebook. So facebook.com slash acre barbecue, E-A-K-E-R-B-A-R-B-E-C-E. Um, you can also hit our website, which is the same, acrebarbecue.com, Instagram, uh, slash acrebarbecue as well. well um, awesome. I, I really appreciate you taking all this time to talk to me, Lance. I know you got your hands full. I know everybody's kind of scrambling. Um, so I, I really appreciate you being, you know, one of the guys who reached out and not only said, Hey, I'm, I'm here to help, but started posting some stuff right away to help people out. Uh, thank you so much. You've been huge for us all. Since almost the beginning, I, I still remember our first podcast, and I need to I need to go out there and visit while, while you are while you are doing another one. So keep me posted whenever y'all start recording again. We will. We the will. Six foot rolling course. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Lance. I appreciate it, man. You have a good one. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir.